Hey, this is OXDF, and today we're looking at response from Hack the Box. And this was a truly insane box from start to finish. So many complicated steps. Um, this video specifically is going to dive on the first step, really, where we are going to abuse a proxy fetch uh, API endpoint that allows us to use an SSRF to fetch a site. And what we're going to do is build ourselves a little proxy that we can run Firefox through so that we can access sites through the SSRF, through this uh, API endpoint that will fetch, fetch a website for us and send back base64 data. We're going to build a Python proxy that's just going to receive, you know, so I go to Firefox, I type in some site I'm not supposed to be able to access. It handles packaging all that up, building digest, doing all sorts of crazy things sending it through that API, getting the response back and sending it back to Firefox. And Firefox doesn't know that it's not just interacting with it directly. So um, I think it's a really cool technique and a really fun thing to build. Um, hopefully you enjoy it. And uh, yeah, let's dive in. All right, so before we start trying to code up some solution, let's talk about what we're trying to do, what our goal is and what we're gonna try to do. Um, I've got this site chat.response.htb. I can't access it for three forbidden. Um, presumably I can access it from other places, but not from where I'm sitting right now. I've also got this site www.response.htb slash status, which gives me the status of some servers and et cetera, including the chat status is running. Um, if I refresh this, you'll see how it says pending for a second. A bunch of you, some requests show up here in, uh, over here in burp, and uh, then it shows me some stuff. If we open up the source here, we can see you know, these say pending, um, there's not a lot going on that, you know, the table here is empty, it says loading data. Um, and then there's this main.js.php. If we jump over and look at that, we can see these functions, and I'm not gonna go into a huge amount of detail here. I'll cover this in my blog post about the box, but we, just to get set up as to what we have, um, it's this dynamically generated, so main.js.php. So it's a PHP site generating JavaScript. Um, and the JavaScript that comes back is in this case, you know, it's got a function to get the API status, which includes a fetch, to URL proxy, which is this right here, to proxy.response.htb slash fetch. And so this fetch takes a body that includes a URL, a method, as well as a session ID and some digests, this URL digest and the session digest. Um, so what are these digests? Well, if you look at the length of them, they're the length of a SHA-256 hash. So we can say maybe they're SHA-256s, but if we try sending the data through them through just SHA-256, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna make the same thing. Um, and it turns out these are keyed hashes or HMACs. Um, we've run into, I've run into this a few times before. Um, the idea is it's like an integrity check. The site doesn't want anyone to just be able to use this proxy for whatever they want. So only someone who knows this key can generate the digest that's necessary to work. And so you can see, we can come over here and we can say, what happens if we go into these fetch responses and we click this and send it to repeater. Um, so if we send this, it works just fine. Um, we can look at it a little more closely. So this is a getting API response.get chat status. Um, we can look at the body coming back over here, highlight this and go to inspector, uh, status running, vhost is here. So it looks like we're getting the actual raw data coming back from the request. That's kind of cool. Um, but so what if the digest is wrong? If we don't know the digest, we change that five to an eight uh, invalid digest, right? So that's, um, that the digest is important. It's preventing me from using the proxy in ways the site doesn't want me to. There's another thing we do have though, and this is this is what we're going to exploit. If we come over here to status.main.js.php and we send that over to repeater, um, we can fetch the JavaScript. That's fine, um, but we'll notice that the session ID in the in the request being passed is my session ID that I'm sending to it here, um, and we're getting the digest of it. And so the question becomes, what happens if we put something else in there, like um, you know something like HTTP? Uh, doesn't hack the box.com and we send that. Well, we get some errors. So session ID is too long or contains illegal characters. Um, that's not good, but it doesn't die on that error. And so we actually still get back. Here's the session of this and the session digest. Now it seems likely that the same digest secret and algorithm is being used to get the digest on URLs as it is for sessions. And in fact, we can test this. What if we set our session ID to api.response.htb. We put that in there and we send. And now we get the same error, but as we scroll down, we'll see that here's our URL of API response and there's the session. And now here's, our, or there's the digest and here's our session of the same and the same session comes back. And so what does this mean? Well, 
we can send whatever we want as this cookie, and we're going to get back the, the digest for it. So we don't get the secret, but we can, in effect, generate the secret on the fly for any URL we want to visit. Um, so we could put, in fact, we could do it right now. We could say chat.response.htb, and we could send this, and we can come down here. And now we have everything we need in this um, digest right here to actually send a request to fetch and get back the response for chat.response.htb. The problem is, um, this is very manual, right? I'm going to get back a base64 encoded blob that I can decode, and then I can try to put it in my browser, but like if I want to try to interact with it at all, I'll notice, um, we'll see, and again, I'm not going to, I'll cover this maybe a little more in the blog post, but it's using um, the socket IO type stuff, and we want to actually interact with that site. So what I want to do is build a proxy in such a way that I just interact with it in the browser, and the browser says, I'm going to send it over to this Python proxy that I already write, and the Python proxy is going to say, hey, we're requesting chat.response.htb, and it's going to say, oh, I need to convert that into a request over to prox proxy slash fetch, and I need to get a digest, and I build all that, and I send it, and then I get the response back, and I put package it back into what looks like a response, and I send it back, and then the browser goes, cool, oh, I got, I got it, and it doesn't even know the difference, right? So um, let's take a look at what that's going to look like. Um, I've got a little diagram here. Um, let me pull that up. Uh, pull this in here. So this would be a lot simpler if we didn't go through burp and burp is not strictly necessary here, but I'm including it because I found, I found for troubleshooting, it's going to be very useful. Um, so what's going to happen? We're going to visit chat.response.htb. Foxy proxy. I already have Foxy proxy configured. I've got a video um, that I will hopefully remember to put a little link to up here in the video on how I set this up. Um, but uh, we will put that in we're going to have Foxy Proxy detecting everything that is going to .htb, and it will put that in to burp. I'm going to add a custom forwarder, custom proxy for burp that says, "Oh, I recognize chat that response to .htb," and so I'm not going to just send this to the tar send this on as usual. I'm going to forward it to this Flask slash Python application that we're going to write in this video. The Flask Python application is going to make a request to response slash status um, main js.php. And it's going to put that URL as the session cookie, and it's going to get back a digest for it. Then it's going to build the right request that needs to get sent to, to slash fetch over here. And it's going to send that through burp again, because I, I want to see it. I want to record these. And again, when we when it doesn't work, I, I don't want to be blind to it. So we're going to send that through burp, and it's going to hit response.htb slash fetch, which is then going to make a fetch to chat, chat that response that HTTP. response It's going to come back. That data is going to come back. Again, base64 encode it and put success send it back over here, which where we'll unpack it and send it back. Huh, I don't think I have, oh, number nine, right over here, all the way across the top, through burp to Foxy Proc through Foxy Proxy into Firefox. Um, so what we're gonna build today is this. Um, and we may refer to this image again, I'm not sure. All right, so let's, how are we get, how, this is not, this is complicated, but it's actually not that complicated. So let's come over here, we will do this. We will do code on current directory get open in VS code um, and we will create a uh, hgproxy.py and we're gonna come here. So uh, what do we need? Um, well, we're gonna make a flask app. So we'll do from flask import no, flake. From flask import flask. And you can do this with um, other HTTP libraries. Flask is just what I'm comfortable with, it's what I've used the most. Um, so for a standard flask app, we're gonna make we're going to make a flask on name. We're going to get ourselves the, na the app object. Um, at the very bottom here, we're going to say if name, well, if I can type, equals main, and then we will app.run debug equals true, port equals 8001. So that is going to be our the guts for our Flask app. Um, the next thing we need to do is uh, make a route. And so I'm going to make, this is kind of a hack, but it actually comes from the Flask documentation. Um, we can do an app.route for slash, and we do defaults equals path, uh, nothing, because that's what that's, I'll, I'll explain what that does in a second. And we can do another app.route on the same, um, on the same function, path, path, like this. And then we can do def all path. 
And what this is going to do, um, return hot. So basically what this is going to do is we've written a web server that no matter what path you visit, it's going to return high. Um, or we could in fact do, oh, that would have been a string, but we will return path. And so what this is going to basically saying is, um, if we do it right, it's going to match on just slash, in which case it's going to, you know, path will be set to, by default, path will be set to an empty string. So this will be returning an empty string. We can also set it to, if we hit anything else, that thing will get stored as the path variable, which will then get passed into this function and returned. Um, and so we can even run this. We hit F5 and use the Python file. Um, and this is running. And if we go to localhost 8001, we get nothing, which makes sense. If we do test, we get test. So we're getting into this um, same function no matter what, you know, but no matter, but now we're getting the variable here. Okay. So we've got that. Um, let's go ahead and say, so we'll say like our target is going to be request, and we're going to need to import that. Oops, I should probably stop this while I edit it. Okay, so from class, we'll import request, and this will give us access to the request object itself, and we can do URL, and that will give us the full URL that we're trying to request. Um, now we're going to need a body for our, we're going to make, we're making our request um, to that fetch API. Let's go over here and see what that looks like. Uh, we've got one right here. So this will we'll grab this. I know this works. We'll say body equals and paste this in. We can make this a little prettier with a few new lines, some spaces. Space here, space here. I could probably just run black on this. In fact, I want to do that really faster. I bet save this, run black on HTTP proxy. Sweet. Okay. So um, black is just a linter formatter. Um, so what do we want to do? Our URL is not going to be this URL. Um, it's going to be request, oh, it's going to be target. And now we need the digest. So we're going to need to write a function up here. We'll call uh, Def get digest on the URL. And we'll pass for now. Um, because we'll come back. We're gonna have to obviously come back and write that. Um, so here we can do get digest on target. And then the method will be get, we'll probably have to do posts, but we'll come back to that. Um, we can leave our session cookie and our digest this kind of hard coded, that's fine. Um, we're gonna need the we're gonna need um requests. So we'll do import requests. Um, this is our Python library for making requests. So with this, we can say response equals request requests dot post. And this will go to HTTP proxy dot response dot hex the box. Oops, slash fetch. And we'll do JSON equals body. And we'll do proxies equals HTTP. HTTP. So we want to. We said we want to go through burp, and that is listening on. I believe eighty eighty, and I think we're good there. Again, I'm going to run black just to clean that up a little bit. Oh, didn't like that. That's what we like. Response equals request. Post. Open. Oh, we're missing a. And we'll clean that up, but yeah, there we go. Okay, so we have this on, we have our post. Um, we're gonna get back, the result is going to be, the body is going to be, um, actually, we'll just, let's just return uh, response.json. So now, the one thing we're missing, so if this was all gonna work, which it, it won't quite yet, let's move this down. If this was gonna work, it would get our stuff, it would get the digest, it would send it to fetch, the response would come back and we return that response to ourselves. Um, what we don't have yet is this get digest. And so we need to, we need to make that real quick. Um, that isn't too hard where we, we just need to, uh, make a request to that main.js.php, right? So we can say cookies equals, and then we'll say PHP sesh ID, cause that's the cookie. And that is going to be URL like that. And then we can say response equals request dot get HTTP 
www response dot hack the box slash status slash main dot js dot php and then we need cookies equals cookies i think that's all we need um we're going to need to figure out we need to find the digest um so we can return response uh, let's just do return response for now what i'm going to do here is i'm going to put a breakpoint right here and i'm going to um run this so we can run this with f5 and nothing bad is happening um but if we come here to that um now this wasn't a good url it's gonna it, you know if we look at um come here in the debug console now we can see if we look at like url is localhost blah 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 but then okay fine so and so we can say response.text is all this stuff um I think we're probably just going to import the, this is kind of lazy, but we're going to import the RE library and grab this right here. So we're going to say, um, let's come up here, import RE. Uh, if we import RE here, we can do RE dot find all, and then our paste that in. Oops, we need get rid of this. And this will be um, zero through F, zero, zero, A through F, zero through nine plus. It's a bit lazy, but we can work with, I think that'll work. Um, so we want, if we do this, comma, response dot, see if that works. Then look, so we've got our response dot text object and we're searching for the session thing. We found a few examples of it. They're always the same. So we can grab this right here copy that come up here and we will do uh, digest equals sorry dot find all and we'll just grab the first one and then we will return digest and we'll save this and we can stop our server now because we don't need this debugging anymore um, but now we should have a working proxy so we're going to test it um, so let's go back to our diagram here we need to make sure Foxy Proxy is forwarding to Burp. That's happening. We'll hit the proxy. The proxy is going to make this request here. That's great. It's going to come back. It's going to send this through Burp. Good. Um, we want to send... Oh, it's not going to send through Burp. we got to fix that. Okay, so let's go. Let's do that now. Um, if we go into Burp Suite and we go over here to Settings, uh, Network Connections, we come down Upstream Proxy Servers. So we can add one of these. I've already added it. Basically, if my destination host is chat.response.htd with stars on it, instead, the proxy, it's going to say next send this through 127.00 or 8,000. So we're going to enable this. And now, when we come up here and we say chat.response.htd, we should, in fact, let's, um, our proxy is not running. So first we will run it and we will put um let's put a breakpoint we got a couple breakpoints in here let's see what's going on so we come up here and we hit f5 to run looks like we're running we come over here and we hit chat response to and we are at the digest part so let's go in burp we have seen i don't mean to do that okay we have a get to chat response we don't have a response yet okay that's good um here we have our digest. We can look and see what it is. Uh, looks good. Oh, we've got a bug here. I don't want the uh, I don't want this full thing. I want just this one part. Put some capture things around that. Save this. Restart. Uh, let's try refreshing again. Okay, we're back here. Let's take another look at the debug console. Digest. That looks better. That's what we want. Okay, so let's continue. Um, we're now at the point where we're about to do our post to fetch. Let's step over that. Uh, let's run through that. Now we got another post to fetch. Interesting. Um, not sure exactly what that was, but we'll let's keep going for a second. Um, so if we have, what is our? Let's just run it. We'll just we'll take these breakpoints out and run because we want to just return these. Um, so we have a git. We have returned a two hundred, and we've got. 
stuff here, right? This is the result of fetch. In fact, if we take this, it's kind of tiny, but it's base64 stuff, right? Um, if we copy this and we echo that, get rid of you and you into base64 minus D, um, we have, we're sorry, this application does not work without JavaScript enabled. Please enable it. Um, and you can download the source code here. So we could download the source code. Um, so we have successfully proxied data. Now, I don't want to get back. I don't want my browser showing me this base64 encoded stuff, right? So let's go back into here and say, we don't want response.json. We want body. We better stop this while we work. We want body, uh, maybe rest body equals result.json slash body. We want the body object, right? That was what this was called. Yep, body. And then we're going to go ahead and get, we're going to bring in base64. So we will import base64. We can do fonts body. Okay. Base64.b64 decode this dot. And then base64 decode is going to return bytes. And I don't want bytes. I want ASCII. So we'll say decode that. And then we will return response body. All right. Let's give that a run and see how it works. Debugger is active. Control R to refresh this. Um, we don't need this breakpoint here anymore, so let's continue. And we've got a page here. Like we kind of are working now. We can look down here and see all this, all these errors coming through. These are all so Flask is nice enough to show us all the requests coming through. Um, and so we we look like we're getting some stuff. We're getting some stuff, and then we start making post requests, and that's. That's, we're getting 405s. Now, the reason we're getting 405s is because post requests are showing up at our proxy. And by default, these app.routes only accept get requests. And so we are failing right there. So we're going to need to fix that. Um, and it's just a lot of these failures. Um, let's, so uh, I'm going to close this for now because I want it to stop. Um, we have to implement post requests. Oh, there was one other thing I wanted to show. Shoot, I shouldn't have closed that. Let's see, chat.response. I don't know why it doesn't stay in my browser. Not happy box. Um, if we open up the dev tools, that's another thing to inspect here. We can see where we're succeeding and failing. Um, right here, we can see some stuff. So uh, there's a bunch of errors in the console. Um, the style sheet's not loading because the mime type is HTML and tech, not text HTML, not text CSS. Um, that's a minor thing, but it's actually, let's, we want the website to work. So let's fix that for now. Um, let's see what else we have. Um, same thing, the JavaScript's not loading because the MIME type's not right. Um, JavaScript's not loading because of the MIME type. So we really got to fix this MIME type. Um, it's not just a nice to. So let's come up here and we'll say like MIME types. And so like for CSS, definitely got to stop this before. Got to get in the habit of stopping the debugger. Um, CSS, we want it to be text slash CFS. Is that right? Yep. Um, for JS, we want it to be valid JavaScript one. I believe it's application slash JavaScript, I believe is a valid one. So now we can come down here and we're just going to do a little trick here where we say, um, uh, okay, I forget. I'm trying to remember how to do this. Okay, we have to go to we have to import a response object from Flask. We can set the MIME type. We can say response, and we're going to say response body. And then we say MIME type. MIME type equals, and now we're going to do MIME MIME types dot get, and what we really want is. Um, the page, huh? What do we? We're gonna want to get the the end of the URL, basically. Um, but we don't want. Let's see. So we want to get like. Let's um, let's actually put a breakpoint here. We can see if we can figure this out. Um, we put an F five here to run this, and we go back here and refresh.
we got the debugger, so debug console. We can say we want like requests. Oops, that wasn't good. Requests. Okay, we got that. What can we let's do a Durham request here so we can see what we're looking at. I bet this gray is really hard to read on over the video. Sorry about that. Um we have but we have this different things we can look at um in the request. I think what we want is the path, I believe. Request dot path. Um, yeah, that's what we're looking for, I think. Um, quest.url. Yeah, because we don't want the stuff, we don't want the parameters, right? We just want this stuff here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say get dot request. Why don't we say um, ext equals request dot path dot r split. So that'll be splitting from the right. And we're going to split on the dot. We're going to split at most one time, and we'll get the last thing. So then we can say request mime types dot get ext, and the default will be um, text html slash html. So if we, for some reason that doesn't work, we'll just return it as html. And now if we run this, and we refresh here. Pull up the developer tools. Oh, we should turn off this breakpoint. Um, so we we don't get those. We are getting um, some other errors. Um, for example, we're getting an error on trying to get the fonts. Let's look into that. Um, but we're not getting any errors. Um, we're not getting the same errors we were getting before. What do we do that lost us the fonts? Let's see. Let's go back up here. Oh, the decode is falling failing. So maybe we want to get rid of that. Maybe maybe it'll handle it fine if we send bytes. Edit. Save. Um, you know what? Actually, I'm gonna take out debug equals true. I bet you I bet you that's what's causing the problems when I'm also running it within the debugger. Um so if we do F5 now, and come back over here and control shift R to refresh. The CSS is loading. Um, so it's failing getting some web sockets. That makes sense. Um, insecure passwords, web sockets, interrupted pages loading. Now it's trying to send some post requests to. Um, so you can see it changes from the transport equals web socket to the transport equals polling. That's good. That's what we want to happen because we, we're not going to be able to do web sockets. Um, yeah, okay, I think this is fine. Um, but we have this post requests failing. So that's that's the next thing we're gonna to have to try to deal with. Um, because all of our post requests are failing. So we don't quite know how to send a post request to um, to slash fetch, right? So we need to figure out how to do that. Um for one, we can go up here and say we can we can make sure we're accepting those. We can say methods equal, in fact, we don't even really need it on the flash because we're not gonna send it. So we can say methods equals get comma post like that. So now we accept both. We can come down here and we can replace the static thing with uh, request.method. I believe that's a thing. And that'll be good. Um, now, we can, now what happens when we send a post request there? We're going to send it through. We, we Presumably, we're going to have some sort of body that we, we have to figure out how to send along. Um, we just uh, refresh this. See if there's any post requests coming through. I don't know if there's any that come through, but naturally, if we have to try to log in. Um, so let's see. We're getting we're getting errors where we don't have a body. So let's come up here. The breakpoint there. Um, let's see. Resp.json. That one has a body. Let's keep going. Here we go. Missing. Okay. Error. Missing parameter body. So let's say let's come up here and presumably it wants that. So we can say um, if request dot method equals post body sub body equals request dot body. No, I think it's request dot data. We could, if this doesn't work, we'll dive in and look. But I think that's as simple as what we need to do here. 
And let's try that. So we'll refresh here. And we'll come back over to the page and we'll refresh here. And then we'll go down. Let's see, do we lose, do we not refresh? No, we, we'll stop here. We have a nice clean ruin. Oh, we're, we're at a break point. Let's stop for a second. Wait till we get some errors. Play on. Okay, so we're still having some errors. Let's put a post, put a break here. Um, it still doesn't like body. Let's see. Uh, so we'll come back here, debug console, response.json. That one looks good. Let's continue. Hit it again. Incorrect pad. Um, that's weird. Let's, let's continue and try that one. Let's, let's see if we can get anything else that gives us anything more descriptive. That works fine. That one looks good. Are we still just, maybe we, we can't get that. We might set a more selective breakpoint here. Um, why don't we do this? Uh, if body, I'll see. Body not in font rest dot json um, uh, x equals one. We just need some space here to x equals one. We need a place to put a breakpoint. We will refresh all of that. We will refresh over here, and here we go. Okay, so debug console uh, resp dot json Incorrect padding. I don't like that. I don't find that useful. Let's try again. See if we get something else. Incorrect padding again. Um, here we go. Invalid base64 encoding. Encoded string. Number of characters. One cannot be more. So that's the error message that I that tips me off. I think it's telling us we need to base64 encode the body before we send it. Um, so we will try that. Um, we're going to now say if post, if post, we're going to say base64.b64 encode request.data. Now this, we definitely want this to be not bytes. So we're going to decode it there. Um, let's refresh this and try. And look at that. That post request went right through. Um, we're not getting errors. These posts are Presumably function. We can go over to burp. We have a lot of stuff going on here, but we can go to the very bottom here and we can see. So like if there's a post to there's a post to socket.io. Response comes back okay. That's that seems like a reasonable thing. I think we, we may have this working. Um and yeah, so I think that we can even take this out. Um like this might be working. Um, let's see, is there anything else we needed to add to this? Um, the, the real check will be the next step in this box is to try logging in with guest guest. So we will try that. And don't know why we hit that. We'll keep going. And look at this, we're online. We can actually send this. We can come in here and start chatting with Bob. And uh, Bob replies. So like we have a working chat app just working through this SSRF that we had to do all sorts of hoop, uh, hoopla to get working for us. Um, so uh, just for the sake of wrapping up, we, what we did was, in this video really was write this. And this right here, what it's doing is it gets the request, it generates the digest for it, or gets the digest for it. It then passes that through the fetch, you know, it encodes the body, it converts it into a API call to proxy source fetch, which makes the call for us, which returns a base64 encoded result which then it unpacks and sends it back to Firefox so that Firefox doesn't even know that it wasn't just interacting with the site. Um, I thought this is a super cool, um, super difficult, kind of hard to believe we're just the first of like many steps of this insane box. But um, this one I thought was really fun. Um, hopefully you enjoyed seeing the thought process and uh, development process of how we got to this point. Um, it took me a lot longer to develop this the first time, um, but once I got it working, um, it's pretty cool. So. Thanks for sticking around with me today, and uh, I'll talk to you next time.